All right, chat. Here we are today with a deck from Q Money. Q Money has tasked me with the Missile Shock Dog Pitbull Talon. What is my last unit deck? Um, so let's talk about deck theory for a little bit here. Uh, so every deck pretty much plays a 10 cost opener. Like that's just if you want to have a good deck, it'll have a 10 cost opener 99% of the time. So your choices are dog or rifle. If you go with dog, that's fine. Obviously, dog is great. Um, you've now got your 10 cost opener. That's one of your slots filled. Now, you then need um, a second anti-infantry unit, because obviously Dog does not cut it. Like, Dog does not beat Laser. You generally need a unit that beats Laser 1v1 very easily. So then you're looking at, like, Rifle, Sniper, Shock Trooper. Um, you could you could arguably say, like, Razorback, but not really. You kind of need a, a an infantry unit. So Shock's Dog, uh, sorry, Shock's Rifle and, and Sniper are really options. And obviously, q has gone for Shock's. Then you need an infantry that kills vehicles. This is like a pretty common thing in games because if you don't have an infantry that kills vehicle, this is not actually a requirement and neither is the anti-laser unit. These are not completely requirements. Well, I think the anti-laser unit is more important than the anti-vehicle infantry. Um, but you don't need an anti-vehicle infantry if you have powerful enough anti-vehicle elsewhere. So let's say you're playing like MLRS. You can maybe rely on MLRS to do all your heavy duty anti-vehicle uh, anti work. Or you can play like MLRS and Orca. You don't really need an infantry, but most people play an infantry. So your options are Gren, Jump Jet and Missile. Grens are just horrible, so you don't play Grens. Jump Jets are decent and then Missiles shoot up. So that's really your option. You, you can have good, a good expensive unit or a good cheap unit. Uh, with the shocks, obviously it kind of makes sense to go with a cheaper unit, but honestly, like this is fine as well. Like either of these, either of these is fine. Uh, but you play like you, you generally play something like this as normal standard deck building, so that you have something to beat like tanks and MLRS and Giga if you get behind against them. So we've gone with missiles. Uh, then you need something that kills light air. So you need something that kills drone swarms and talons, and uh, like hammerheads and phantoms, like things that don't shoot back effectively. Obviously, your choices there are slingshot and pitbull for GDI. Maybe hammerhead, but really you want like you want something that kills talons, not mirrors them. Um, so you can't really play Talon. So Hammerhead is acceptable, but generally speaking, people want something cheaper. So Pitbull and Slingshot. And Pitbull is just amazing, so everyone plays Pitbull. Uh, then you want something that kills bombers, like Inferno, basically. Like Inferno, Mohawk, things that will beat your Pitbulls very easily. Um, Missiles usually fills that role quite well, but they're quite slow. Um, and obviously sometimes you need something that shoots up uh, and, is, and is flying because of things like um, Inferno that will kill infantry and vehicles. So that can really be Talon or Hammerhead. You don't have to play Talon or Hammerhead, like decks can get away with this. If you're good enough with Pitbull Micro, you can usually use Pitbull Missile to beat all air. But a lot of the time you want a Talon or a Hammerhead. Again, we're going for cost efficiency, so we've got the Talon. Uh, it could easily be Hammerhead though, but a few money's gone with the Talon here. So our last unit needs to be heavy anti-vehicle, basically. That's what it comes down to. Like currently our deck has no air that shoots down and no vehicle that can tangle with enemy heavy vehicles. So we have nothing that kills like we have nothing that effectively kills Predators, Scorpions, MLRS, and Giga Cannon. And also, if it comes out, you know, Titan and Centurion and Sandstorm, all that kind of stuff. So you kind of need something that fills that role. This can really be MLRS, Predator, could technically be Grens, but you've already got the missile, so, you know, and Grens suck, but it could be Grens. If it was Nod, then Mutant would be a legitimate option, but Grens are bad and Mutants are good. So you're really looking at MLRS, Predator, Orca, Borka, and Mohawk. Orca kind of sucks now, like been the Obviously, when you could tech splash, you could also play Titan or Zone, but you can't do that anymore. Like tech splash is bad now. So tech splash is bad. Borka is bad. You're left with Mohawk, Orca, Predator, MLRS. So those are really our four options. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna play some games of each of them, and we'll see which one is the best. Uh, we'll go from right to left, I guess. So we'll start with the Mohawk. Uh, now we're gonna look at commanders. With the MLRS and the Predator, I would say you basically have to play Jackson with those two units. With the Orca and the Mohawk, you don't have to at all. Um, I believe you could play almost any commander with this deck. You could play Jackson, you could play Solomon, you could play McNeil, you could play... I think you could literally play all of them. You could even play Liang. Um, I'm gonna go with the strong arm, I think. Just because I want to try strong arm out a little bit. I might even do like a game of strong arm, a game of Liang or something and see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna start with strong arm, I think. Alright, so we're up against Underfrog. Uh, Jeffrey says Mohawk being one shot is going to be a feels bad. Yeah, if you have Stealth Tank, that's going to be a problem. Like, Stealth Tank is very good against this deck because it kills the Mohawk. 
and I don't have uh, I don't have jump jets either. So yeah, stealth tank is definitely a beating for this build. If you want to be good against stealth tank, then uh, the predator is definitely the best. Predator is very good against stealth tank. Predator is good against Nod War Factory. Like it's good versus uh, everything except Giga Cannon, pretty much. Like it'll beat the um, it'll beat the uh, it'll beat the Scorpion. It'll beat the uh, what's it called? It'll beat bikes. It'll beat um, buggy. It'll beat what was the thing I was just talking about? Anyway, let's get a shot trooper here. It'll basically be all the Nod War Factory, uh, if you have Predator. Alright, so we've got a Chuggy, which is obviously my least favourite unit in the game right now. I believe Chuggy is just, like, grossly overpowered. I don't think these shocks live long enough. I'm gonna get dogs to go and hold this pad. There's no way these shocks are living long enough. Actually, maybe they are. No, they didn't. But I got dogs on the pad, so that's alright. Uh, so yeah, we're up against Mutant Chuggy. One of the best ways to beat Mutant Chuggy is to go air, so that's why I've opened my air tower. I'm going to get a Talon to start working on this mutant, then I'm going to get a Mohawk so that he can't send bikes at my uh, Talon. Like a Mohawk will shut down the shut down the bikes, hopefully. I've also got this Pitbull that will help with the bikes, obviously. But yeah, Talon takes forever to kill a, kill a Mohawk. Mohawk? Kill a mutant. Um, I'd obviously rather use shocks for it. And we'll kill this Chuggy before it gets over to the shocks. I actually think the Talon Mohawk is a pretty good combo versus Nod. Uh, even Banshees like don't break the combo because Talon beats them 1v1 like on defense the Talon wins Yeah, you see Talon traded with it there, which I'm pretty happy with so I can just make Talons and Mohawks for a while And I'll probably be pretty good up pretty pretty well off also I can always just go into Pitbulls which are amazing versus all air So anytime things get questionable I can just go for the go for the Pitbull Let's get the Mohawk on this dude Mohawk plus uh, any support unit will also one-shot bikes so like if you have the Talon shooting the uh, if you get the Talon to shoot the uh, bike at the same time as the Mohawk, then you'll kill one bike per Mohawk shot. You can see how, how low money I am though, like GDI is really really just like... GDI's efficiency is really struggling in the new patch, I think. It's a big problem for GDI. So we're gonna win the game anyway though. But yeah, I was really broke for a lot of that game. I only made one turret as well. So yeah, it's hard man, it's hard, hard playing GDI in this pack. Alright, so we're against Underfrog again. Uh, this time the map is a little better for him. Um, I think, anyway. We're actually not sure. I was going to say the map's better for him because, like, Mutant Chuggy likes this kind of tight, tight, like, closed off map. But, actually, Mohawk Talon is, was really good against him. Um, which can also work well on this kind of a map. So, I'm not really... He's just gone bikes first and gone and hit my Harvester once. I'm not really sure why. I'm going to block the bikes in with the Pitbull so that I can, uh, can clean them up. Basically for free. I mean, obviously I'll take some damage, but every time a Pitbull stands next to bikes, it wins by a lot. It's only when bikes run away that the bikes do better. A second bike. We'll go for a second Pitbull, that's fine. It's really important not to take the free bike volley on the low hit point Pitbull. That's what will that's what cause me problems. If you can get both Pitbulls to shoot the same bike squadron as well, it's a big deal. Yeah, you see, if you get the two Pitbulls together and they can shoot the same bike... He's, he's down three bike squadrons now. And I've lost one and a half pit bulls. So that's 90 for about 60. We get the shots for these scavs. He's gonna have to go chuggy for the shots, but he's kinda low on money, I would assume, since he's switching to the scavs and they're kind of expensive. Hopefully he doesn't hit my pit bull. He does hit my pit bull, of course. Sad times. I'm just gonna spam pit bulls for now. Until I can get Mohawk, I'm just gonna spam pit bull basically. Oh, I'm really, uh, really messing up my clicks here. Look how much damage my shocks take. He barely went near them, like, he barely touched them, and... <laughs> they're almost dead now, like, because uh, Chuggy is insane. That Chuggy died almost instantly after it got into range of my shocks. But yeah, he hasn't made anything to kill my Pipples yet, because he needs Mutant for that. I guess he's trying to get rid of the shocks before he goes Mutant. I'm definitely going to switch into Air now. I've got Mohawk first, even though the Talon makes more sense, because I just care more about the Chuggy than I do about the Mutants. Like, I want to kill the Chuggy, I don't need to kill the Mutants that badly. And then we'll go Talon afterwards. Now we'll chill. Shoot this one. Bring the Talon into support so we can kill one bike per Mohawk, Mohawk shot. Makes a big difference if you can do that. I think that Mohawk's gonna die. Yeah, that's sad. Still got a lot of damage in, though. Get both of these talents to shoot here. 
Let me get these drops over here, and we're gonna put a turret down. This is the first turret we've been able to afford the whole game, which is pretty sad. Man, I would have been kind of sad if I'd lost that missile. <laughs> yeah, okay, Mohawk Talon seems really good against his deck. He didn't have a stealth tank though, he had a Banshee. If he had a stealth tank, it would, uh... Stealth tank is normally what people play in Mutant Chuggy, and it, it hard counters the Mohawk. Like, this matchup would be very hard against stealth tank. Alright, so I've decided to make it a little spicy and go with the uh, Liang and the Orca. So we switch to the Orca now. This, I think, is going to be the worst build of the, the worst version of the deck. Did not mean to go um, Barrett's opening. I think, wow, well, that is really fast, two units. I think what I'm going to do is go Dogs. Yeah. I could have gone Missile. Wow, okay. He's, is he no halving? He must no half. If he has two units that quickly and they're different buildings, that must be no half. No, I don't know why anyone would ever no-half GDI. Like, no-half nod makes some sense because you have some really good efficient units, but no-half nod, no-half GDI is horrible. Alright, we're gonna our own pitbull now as well. I really want to stall the missile against no-half. I'm gonna get some shocks because that shuts down the rifles pretty hard. Yeah, I mean this game is not gonna be a very interesting game because no half GDI is just terrible. So I would go Mohawk here, except I just remembered it's an Orca, not a Mohawk. So I guess I'll go Orca, because the point is to test out which one is good, but I really don't think the Orca's going to be great. Another shock. Let's get the Orca down here where I can help out with this pitfall. I kind of just want to shoot something with the Orca, I don't even care what it is. Well, I mean, I don't want to shoot his infantry, but I'll shoot pretty much anything else. And then I think I'm going to Liang these two. Since the Orca is worth quite a lot of money. I should probably bring this Pitbull down. Yeah, I don't know about this Liang, it's... I guess it obviously hasn't been great this game, but... That doesn't necessarily mean that much. Alright, so yeah, no hop GDI is, uh, is pretty bad. So not too surprising there. The Orca was alright, actually. I mean, I shouldn't hate too much. Being able to, like, instant give some dogs is not that bad. Alright, so I need to remember I'm a dog deck. I keep getting confused. When I see two barracks, two war factory, I always think I'm a rifle missile deck. I do think dogs is like the best opening in the game as well. I really like dog opening. It's super strong. Alright, we'll get our two dogs on this missile. If he goes for another missile, we'll go for another dog. If he goes war factory, we won't. He should have another missile by now if he was going to make one, so it means he's switching. Oh no, there it is delayed it for some reason. Obviously this dog doesn't matter anymore, it's like a one-man dog, we'll let that go. And now he's built so many missiles, we're obviously going to switch into shocks. Yeah, it's super easy to win first missile with dog opening against barracks, honestly. Quite like the Orca now, to be honest, but we're a little bit low on cash. So let's have another shot trooper as well. Yeah, we're gonna get gonna get a Orca here to try and shoot these chasers.
I'm not going to keep that pip alive, unfortunately. It actually does have quite a lot of value since I'm playing Liang. If I can keep it alive, I can heal it up, but sadly, maybe you're a little too aggressive with it. This, uh, this Orca, Orca shot combo is actually working out pretty nicely. The Orca has been pretty good so far. Might even Liang it back up. Oh, I did not mean to shoot there, though. Oh, well. Looks like a pretty easy win, though. The Orca wasn't bad, actually. The Orca wasn't bad. I think the Liang is probably nonsense, but I quite liked the Orca. Um, the biggest problem is just the extra cost. Like, I was struggling with the Mohawks. So then with the Orca, it's even harder. Alright, so now we're on Predator. Predator and Jackson. I feel like with Predator, you have to play Jackson or Liang. Um, and we don't have enough other things to Liang for me to be incentivized to play Liang. So I've gone with Predator here. I mean, I've gone with Jackson, even. Opponent has opened Flamers. Seems unwise against my dogs. I'm gonna go for a dog since he's opened with a, like, a Flamer into Missile here. I would like to be charging the Missile, but unfortunately we are fighting on this pad, so I'll, I'll fight off the pad as much as I can. On bikes. Right. Oh, bikes take a while to kill stuff. I think I'm gonna go Predator. This might be too slow, but we'll see. It takes like four seconds to move one tile with a Predator. So to get from the base to here is like 4, 8, 12, 16. It's like 20 seconds to get from the base to the middle of the map, which is a pretty long time. Like a, a missile charge is what, like 45 seconds? So it's like half a missile to get a Predator across half the map. We're gonna get the dogs on the back pad, get the shocks on the front. Could have pretty good control here. He needs to go air to get back onto the missile. Now, Chuggy is something that Predator is very good against. It's one of the one of the one of the main things I like playing Predator for. Is actually really good against Chuggy because the Raider allows you to stand on top of your infantry and just hit two shots for Chuggy. So yeah, Predator is actually a really good answer to Chuggy. He also just spent like 80 on that Jade missile that killed, I think, just a shot trooper. Also, Predator, Predator can go Shrek Harvesters if you get the opportunity. Predator is actually just like a really powerful unit. I think Predator is underrated. Like, it was shot down by Shade for a long time. So, like, people didn't want to play Predator, but it's actually just a really good unit. Oh, didn't get the half. Didn't get the half. I'm not going to win the game. Come on, Predator. Ah, oh, Threw that one. Absolutely threw that one. So of course the problem with Predator is speed. Speed of Predator is very slow. Um, makes it very hard to run away from air counters, and also makes it very hard to get to pads in time if like there's actual real contention going on. And the other problem with Predator is it's pretty hard to push a Predator into an MLRS or a Giga Cannon, but it's not impossible. It is rough. If you play on like a good Giga map and you're playing this deck against Giga, you're almost certainly going to lose. Like a good Giga map, you play this deck against Giga, you're going to get wrecked. Just the way it is. Um, but you can always switch the Talon to like an Orca or a Mohawk to give you outs in those spots. Alright, so what we're going to do here, he's got this double double missile going off my dog, so I get the shock over there. He hasn't really got a way to clear out these dogs yet, and this miss, this rifle doesn't do anything to the shots, like the shot can just go and beat up the single rifle. I'm going to try and kill this, I'm not moving these shocks because I just want to get rid of these missiles, guarantee that they can't take this pad. And then we'll send the Pitbull to go kill out, kill the Talon. Yeah, so easy, easy first missile there, very nice. The other thing that's amazing about Predator is Pitbull is one of the most ubiquitous GDI units in the game. Like, everyone plays Pitbull, Pitbull's amazing. Um, Predator just beats Pitbull, like, super hard, like, it two-shots it. You basically can't make Pitbulls when there's Predator around, because it just annihilates them. So that is, like, a pretty significant upside to the Predator there. I'm gonna see if I can get his Orca to shoot my dogs. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. And I'll boost the Pitbull and go in. Oh, that boost. Sometimes you got to know when to let a unit go, and that one was that one was done for. You shouldn't boost it trying to save all the time. All the time. All right, so here is in fact a Pitbull, and we are going to go Predator, which shuts it down. 
I'm so confident in my Predator's ability to wreck this Pitbull, I'm gonna save my low hit point Pitbull. Yeah, look at that, it just chunks it, man. It chunks it so hard. Let's get this on the pad. Get the Predator over here, I'll get a fresh Pitbull in case his Pitbull beats mine. Oh, we didn't get on the pad in time. Feels bad, dude. See, like you can see, Predator got from here to here in like the final missile charge. <laughs> Even with some stalling, it only moved like three tiles. That's kind of the problem with Predator. But I do like Predator, I think Predator is a very good unit. The problem with this is just there are certain matchups where you're going to get absolutely shrecked, like Giga Cannon is the main one. Giga Cannon is just such a beating. But otherwise, a deck like this is very strong. Alright, now we're finally going to do MLRS, which I believe we will play Jackson for. Alright, so final final build, we're gonna go with the MLRS. This is a classic build that I've basically been playing. I've been playing with um I've been playing with jump jets instead of missiles though. Frank's Fermoir plays like Fanatics. He plays Fanatic variant decks, but he plays pretty much just Fanatics. He plays either like Fanatic Tank or he plays Fanatic Giga. Uh, obviously we're on battlefield, so I'm hoping it's tank and not Giga, because Giga is just insane on this map. The fact he's not built anything yet makes me think it's tank. Because he tends to, yeah, it's tank. He tends to like to wait uh, and try and go tank against pit bulls. So if I go dog pit bull, he'll go wheel tank. Um, so yeah, I was trying to avoid that happening. I'll go second missile, and then we're gonna want shock troopers for the shot uh, for the fanatics. Yeah, there they are. Here they come. I played against this guy a lot recently, so I know I'm pretty much pretty sure I know what he's gonna do most of the time. So the next thing we want is to get the MLRS set up, because the shock troopers can deal with Fnatic, sort of. We want to get this MLRS built. Well, not, not built, you know what I mean, like, we need to get it on the field. And then we need to get, uh, we need to get some more shocks to deal with these Fnatics. I really need to get a hit in on the... I need to get a hit in on the, shock, on the tank with something else, because MLRS will one-shot a damage scorpion. Man, I almost lost the shocks just to a single wheel squadron. It's kind of nuts. I believe he's Seth as well. Yeah, he's Seth, so I do need to be aware of that. He's going to drill pod at the top now. Oh, he has shade. That's really unfortunate. Right, I can kill this tank off with the pitbull and probably get the shade as well. Nice. That actually went pretty well for me. The fact he has shade is worrying though. The fact he has shade makes me think I'm gonna have a really hard time, uh, really hard time using the MLRS at all. And also makes me think that Talon is gonna be good against him because like he has to have a unit missing from his deck to have room for the shade. And I'm thinking it's probably the it's the bikes or the stealth tank I'd imagine. Probably the stealth tank. But I'm gonna get the Talon out and force him to make bikes so we can at least find out if he has bikes. We haven't actually seen them yet. He is, in fact, the bikes that he's cut. Wow, that's crazy. All right, well, if he's cut the bikes, then Talon Spam is a beating, so we're going to make a lot of Talons here. You can combo kill with Tal uh, with Stealth Tank, where you can split the shots. So you kill two, yeah, like that. So you kill two Talons, which obviously makes it a lot more effective. But, yeah, Talon Spam is still going to be super annoying for him to deal with. Surprised at how much of a hard time I'm having over here. I'm not sure why I went shot through this there. How did he reload so quickly? Did he split shot? Pretty impressive stuff. Alright, well I think we need another MLRS, but I'm not 100% sure how we're gonna beat the shade. It's just, this is kind of what I was saying earlier about how GDI is, it's just really hard to make a good GDI deck at the moment, like, GDI really struggles, like, Nod, Nod has significantly more powerful units, I'd say, at the moment, like, Chuggy Marauder, uh, Chuggy Marauder's Fnatic, Stealth Tank, these are all, like, really, still pretty great units, pretty great units, and Nod really, I mean, Shade is still a pretty powerful unit as well, I don't really think GDI has a lot that's good. The jump jet talon was really the the dream combo for for nods oh, for GDI sorry, and they don't have that anymore.
Yeah, played in the beatings for me for sure. Yeah, I'm just broke, man. Like, GDI is so hard to play now. I really wish I had Predator. Predator would have been amazing in this matchup. Unfortunately, no Predator. We're playing the MRS at the moment. Yep, Pred Predator would have been a lot better in that matchup. But then, of course, if you play in the Giga, then the Predator is just like an auto lose, so. Alright, so last game with the MLRS. I think probably, I don't really think there is another variant, to be honest. I think that's really your four options uh, as the deck is given. Um, Stealth Tank, the Predator would have been better against, but like I said last time, the Giga, if, he, if he has Giga Cannon instead of... Uh, if he's playing Giga Cannon instead of Scorpion, then the Predator gets wrecked. So it's really like just, you know, you got to choose which one you want to lose to. Like, the MLRS will help you beat the Giga Cannon, and the uh, Predator will help you beat the Scorpion Tank. And the Stealth Tank. But you're always going to be weak to something. I do kind of think we're in another meta game where, uh, very similar to back when Jade Laser, when Jade Laser Drone deck was the best nod deck, uh, we're kind of in a meta game where GDI just kind of loses to nod. Like it just like nod is just more powerful than GDI right now. So you can build nod decks that are a bit bad against like they should theoretically they should be bad against GDI units, but they're not because nod is just more powerful at the moment than GDI is. So you can have like weaknesses to Pitbull, for example, or weaknesses to Talon, which, you know, in the old meta, or weaknesses to Jump Jet, like in the old meta these would have been problems, but now Nod is just, uh, Nod is just so much better than GDI, you can get away with being a little bit weak. And then you just build your deck to win Nod Mirrors, basically. So I guess we want to try and set up an MLRS, get MLRS and shocks. Not really loving the MLRS, honestly. I think uh, of the things we've tried, the Mohawk has felt very good, honestly. The Mohawk and the Predator have both felt good. Uh, obviously, like I've said a million times now, Predator has the downside of losing to losing to um, Giga Cannon and losing probably pretty badly to Giga Cannon as well. I don't think I don't think that one's going to be that close. You'll get kind of shrekt by that fight. But I've been impressed with the uh, impressed with the Predator and the Mohawk. Those felt like the two best. Potentially, you don't need the Talon with the Predator. That might be the solution. The solution might be Predator and then switch to uh, switch to an Orca or Mohawk for your last unit. The problem with that, though, is that once you switch to the uh, Orca or Mohawk, you're going to be super weak to Infernos. So yeah. It's really, really hard to build a GDI deck that can be all Nod decks at the moment. There's like three or four good Nod decks. You can play like a Fnatic Nod deck, you can play Giga, you can play Chuggy, you can play Inferno. These are all acceptable things you can do with Nod and they're all powerful and strong. Um, GDI is, you just pick one of those things to, to lose to, basically. Like you just, <laughs> you have to pick one of those things that you're going to really suck against, maybe even two of them. And just, uh, just hope you don't run into those things. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, in terms of helping out Q money, I would say the Predator or the Mohawk is his best bet. The Orca was better than I expected, but I do think conceptually this looked kind of bad. But it did feel better than I expected it to. Um, so I think maybe this is the best build. This is the best build. Just accept that Predator. Just accept that Giga is going to beat you. Uh, try and learn how to juke Giga. Try and learn how to decharge it, and then get in with a Predator whilst it's uh, whilst there's an opening. That's your best chance. Um, but yeah, I think Predator made the most sense. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that one, and I'll see you all next time.